In almost every aspect of our lives, what we do is determined by who we are. God blesses each of us with a unique personality and the skills to deal with life's challenges. In Course 1, A Journey of Faith, we learn that God brings us all together into a community of faith, that we're joined together for the purpose of doing God's work. In Course 2, A Path to Spiritual Maturity, we learned about the importance of growing spiritually and how that maturity makes us more complete and prepares us fully to be followers of Christ. Today, we're ready to venture farther on our journey to look at ministry. We'll learn what ministry really means, who does the work of ministry, and where we fit into it all. It's really about looking inside ourselves recognizing our best skills and putting them to work for God's purpose. The word ministry itself is often misunderstood. Ministry is simply making God's work a part of our life in whatever way we can, calling on the values we have received as Christians to make the world a better place for everyone, whatever role we have, coworker, parent, friend, family member or acquaintance becomes a ministry. To understand what model of ministry we should follow, we need to look no further than Jesus Christ. Jesus taught by example. His entire life was a ministry communicated by deeds, not just words. We communicate the good news of God's love and mercy best when we follow Jesus' example in our everyday lives. How we go about our life every day is ministry, when we live aware of the presence of God. God wants us to be ourselves. So how do we discover and use the talents we've been given? How do we know what God wants us to do as a minister? One way is to take on a particular duty within the church. This might include giving pastoral care, helping with evangelism efforts, teaching a Sunday school class, or participating in outreach programs. Another way is to develop a type of ministry designed just for our own special skills and talents. Coming up with this type of ministry is often a learning process in itself. In fact, it's an important part of finding out what our spiritual gifts are and knowing how to best use them. As is often the case along our spiritual journey, we have to make choices. We might take one pathway, discover it's not the right way to go, and choose another. The point is, we must continually seek out the path that's right for us. We must be willing to change paths if necessary, and we must always evaluate whether or not the path we're on is the right one. Since a ministry is really a labor of love, the best place to start is by asking, what do I love to do? It is no secret that all of us have things we love to do. Those inclinations come from God. It's God's way of showing us where our heart is leading us. At a very young age, uh, my parents and, and friends encouraged me to be a part of singing, of playing, of just enjoying music in the environment of the church. Um, 
It was non-threatening, it was welcoming, it was warm, it was enjoyable. And from that time on, that was where I felt my place was. When I got the job, it was so obvious that it was what I was supposed to do. It was as if everything I had ever done came together in this one position. So I didn't hesitate. I didn't think about any of the possible negatives. I just said, I can do that job. There are many ways to discover where our talents lie. First, we need to take a personal inventory. We need to evaluate our physical, mental, and spiritual health. It is important to make a realistic appraisal of our circumstances and know how much energy we have to pursue goals beyond those we've already taken on. Determine if there are personal or family needs that take precedence. It is important to remember that as much as God wants us to join in the work of ministry, caring for ourselves and those closest to us is our first ministry. Once we've made our evaluation and determined that we're ready and able, our path to ministry starts with five basic steps. The first is to dedicate ourselves to a ministry. This may sound simple, but it's essential that we give God our full attention. Eliminate distractions. In our busy lives, we often find we've taken on more than we can handle. We have to take a good look at our commitments and eliminate the unnecessary ones. Evaluate strengths. Be honest. We shouldn't exaggerate our abilities or sell ourselves short either about the types of ministry we enjoy. I always tell people, whatever you like, whatever you're good at, God has a use for. Cooperate with others. Ministry doesn't happen in a vacuum. We can combine our unique strengths and abilities with those of others. And finally, we must put the gifts God has given us to work by serving, teaching, encouraging, contributing and leading. Our first step in choosing a ministry is finding a place where our skills and interests meet the needs presented to us. This is the place where we should spend the most time and effort. Another kind of ministry is helping out where we're needed. It might not require our best skills and talents, but it might appeal to our desire to be of service and our willingness to respond to another's needs. For example, we might be asked to greet people at a church service or help in the church kitchen. Any job, no matter how big or small, is important. We do a lot of work before Christmas and Easter preparing all of the uh, leaflets for the, all the different services. And there's always mail outs, uh, letters, whatever, and we put address labels on or do whatever, whatever needs to be done. The ministry that we offer is not just for members of our church community. Ministry also happens outside the church. A minister might serve the community by providing meals to the hungry, helping in homeless shelters, providing books and toys for needy children, or being Christ to those we meet. A minister can be a spiritual friend, someone others can count on to share spiritual struggles or issues with comfortably. Doing the work of ministry begins only when we are properly prepared and when we know in our hearts the time is right. We believe that God has given us a unique combination of abilities with which to help others. We believe that God has called us to serve. Now it's time in our journey to find out what shape our ministry will take. In the next segment of this course, we'll complete an exercise designed to help discern the unique gifts God has given each of us. With this information, we'll be ready to use our gifts and talents to make our ministry the best it can be. That's coming up next as the Discovery Series, A Christian Journey, continues. <laughs>